All right, let's talk. take a minute and uh, talk about capacitor testing. Um, I see a lot of people testing capacitors with their regular multimeter, which is okay, but it's not going to tell you if the capacitor is stable or not for use. It will tell you the max capacitance that the current capacitor that you're testing has. And that is it. Um, it will not tell you the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor or if it's in, ready to fail or getting close to fail. Nothing. It will tell you basically if your capacitor capacitance is in range. I'm not going to get too scientific into how a capacitor works and how ESR works. You can Google that. There are plenty of videos out there. Way, they, people can explain it way better than I can. I, I'm trying to keep these videos basic for everybody that watches my videos can actually benefit from the content. Alright, so basically if you test your capacitor with a regular set, a regular uh, multimeter, you will see, trying to do this one hand, it's not easy. You will see that the capacitor shows 100 microfarad, or roughly 98.1. And that is what the capacitor is rated. It is rated 25 volts at 100 microfarad. And this is a pretty old cap. This is probably something from the early 80s. And it's been kicking around in my parts bin for decades. So we're going to go put this on an ESR meter and show what it shows. So basically I have the, the blue ESR meter, Bob Parker. It was a kit. You can assemble this at roughly around 100 bucks. You can get these almost uh, anywhere on eBay or Amazon or um, anywhere like that. I don't like to follow this chart because it's very hard to follow. And I don't, I don't know. I have a chart that I printed out, which is right here. And... Basically at 25 volts at 100 microfarad, you should probably get no more than 0 0.5, 0 0.5 ohms resistance. Anything higher than that, and you, you just uh, chuck it in the barrel. So let's see what we got here. Not bad. It's 0.44. But, I know this capacitor has problems. How do you test for that? Well, it's not easy. In some cir circumstances, it takes a little bit of uh, assistance of other another thing. And that would be temperature. Um, you can freeze it, and you can heat it. You can actually it's, heat it with either a hair dryer, a hot air work, rework station, or something to that effect. Um, and you can also freeze it. That's why they sell this freeze it stuff. They used to call it tech in a can. And you can temporarily revive capacitors to see if it comes back to life. Um, sometimes they actually raise the capacitance. I mean, they raise the resistance. So, I mean, it can work either way. You, but typically, you can temporarily get the capacitor to work again while you froze it. So you would go around your circuit and you would spray each capacitor and find where the fault is. That's nice. Now I want to show you here what happens when you freeze this capacitor that's probably 20 years old. Alright. 1.6, 1. 1 point whatever ohms. Uh, it's not a very stable cap. Now, if you put this on this meter, you will notice that, let's put it back on this meter. And you will see that we're at 95 mics. That's not bad. Any average person that measured this capacitor said it's a 100 mic cap capacitor, and I would just go with it. But no, I would not. I would, uh, this is on the verge of, of being a no good capacitor. Uh, I would not want to put this in any electronics that are going to be outside or going to be heated up um, heated up in any degree. So, junk, you know, and your regular multimeter says it's good. Your ESR says something different at different temperatures. Now, it might be within range of your, um, it might be in range at room temperature, but what happens when the device heats up? What happens when it's next to a power supply or a heat sink? 
Uh, this is the common fault of most electronics is these electrolytic capacitors and you will be replacing a lot of these and almost 90% of the time that I fix something is always a bad capacitor. It's as simple as that and it's a cheap repair and it can make you a lot of money if you just know what to look for. You can look for bulges in the back of the capacitors. This is a, a lead leads coming out of both ends on this capacitor but you can most standard capacitors will have two leads coming out of one end and you'll have your top here with a couple slits in it and those, sl those slits are made to pop open if there's a buildup of pressure in this capacitor from it dying it will ex it will explode well not explode well some do explode but it will it will start leaking electro electrolytes all over your circuit board or the case that it is mounted in so it's just a little hint for the new, you know, the new guys on the block trying to get into electronics and uh, trying to troubleshoot devices. Uh, you know, sometimes you turn that radio on, a DVD player, a CD player, radio, whatever it is that you're trying to repair, and it works fine. And then an hour later, there's something going wrong with it, and it's blinking, or something's not malfunctioning, or the sound sounds horrible, or you know, you get a 60 cycle hum on the on the uh, speakers. And this is the most common problem. Why? is the electrolytic capacitor is failing and sometimes when you test them with these normal multimeters they will not tell you that they cannot show you the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor I hope this helps somebody and um, let me know if you want more videos like this I try to keep them as basic and simple as possible I do not want to make this too complicated for people that are just starting out alright we'll see you in the next video